Hi, everybody. I'm Sasha Banks, and welcome to the Mando Fan Show. I'm just kidding. It's John. Hey, everybody. Hey, we're live. Friday night, Mando Fan Show. We're so excited to be here talking about Chapter 11 of The Mandalorian. Uh, James and Lacey with me, as always. And our special guest this week, uh, you probably know him from Kevin Smith's Comic Book Men, uh, which is now on Amazon Prime, uh, his podcast, I Sell Comics, and a sharedUniverse.com, which is his podcast uh, venture to kind of get more people into podcasting. We'll get to that in a second. Ming Chen, what's up, man? What's Yay. up? Uh, thank you for the warm welcome, uh, and and thank you for the warm welcome back. Uh, this is the way, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This is the way. <laughs> this is the way, yeah. Uh, we're so excited to have you back. We had you uh, on a, maybe, a, I don't even know, time doesn't exist anymore. I think it was about a month or so ago, and we talked uh, about um, just Star Wars in general and, and that sort of thing, and we, we had a good time with hypotheticals crossing over comics and, and Star Wars and stuff, but now we're here to talk about The Mandalorian, which, uh, as I understand it, is your favorite element of the modern era in Star Wars so far? Oh yeah, I, I, any when I, anyone asks like, well, "Hey, what do you think of the Mandalorian?" I was like, "Dude, this is the best thing that happened to Star Wars since Return of the Jedi." By far. Oh, right on. Okay, and, nice. And I know there, you know, the Clone Wars, Rebels is great. Uh, you know, the prequels, the, the 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 you know the last three, but I don't think Star, you know, nothing has come out in the Star Wars universe which is uh, reunited fans, I guess, and one that Star Wars fans universally love, which, as we all know is almost impossible. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, you know, the, the fandom has kind of gotten to a point where if maybe some people hate everything, you know, yeah. and there's an old adage that you can't satisfy everybody. Well, John Favreau, he just did. So <laughs> yeah. right? that worked a yeah. mir- he continues to work miracles. And I, and I love that guy. Yeah, he's pretty, he's money, baby. As they, as they say, he's money he doesn't even know it. He doesn't even, maybe he knows it now. I think you don't. Know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we, we want to thank everyone who's joining us live right now. Uh, if you do, if you don't mind, take a second and hit like on the video. That helps us out for people finding the channel. And uh, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, too. Um, and, of course, uh, there's people that are going to be listening to this after the fact, and that's fine. Still like the video if, uh, if you're watching. And uh, make sure you're subscribed to wherever you listen or uh, follow us. Um, and if you want to use the Super Chat, you can. That's another way to support us and also get your comments read right here on the show to interact with us and Ming. And uh, just so you know, you could also pick up uh, Mando Fan Show gear at teespring.com slash stores slash uh, resistance broadcasts. So uh, look like we have one right out of the gate here. Orlando C says, good evening, John James, Miss Lacey. Uh, welcome, Ming. Wow, Bo-Katan, the hype is real, baby. This will be my second 10 beautiful Pedro Pascal faces of the season. Chapter 11 truly belongs here with me among the clouds. I love how... A Lando Calrissian is a supporter of our show and sneaks in little Lando lines yes. every once in a while. So very cool. Thank Great. you so much, Lando. That is so awesome, man. And and to keep... bring back the uh, the Falcon Airlines shirt just for him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we have Alex Zucas here. I'm sad Jack Fish didn't appear in this episode. One you day. Don't, you don't know. One <laughs> day. Um, all right. So now we got to rate this thing, James and Lacey. How you guys? How you guys feeling? You guys excited to uh, be back on the Mando fan show? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. This is this was a uh, a great episode, big one. I'm I'm still kind of in that like I'm not sure if it's my absolute favorite favorite, but yeah. it is up there, man. And it, and it might over time become my favorite. Yeah. Are we giving scores right now? You want me to give score? Or going no, to no, 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 Lacey. You're how you doing? What's going on? I'm good. I think this episode I liked better than the last one with all the spiders. Although okay. I hate seafood, so I feel like John Favreau is just like <laughs> looking at things that I don't like, and he's like throwing it in this season and somehow making me like it. But um, the music stuck out to me a lot this episode. Yeah, I agree. The music I thought was fantastic. Um, all right, so this is what we do here to kick off the show. We have what we call the Pedro Pascal face scale because we really weren't sure if we were going to see him when we first created this thing last season. So we figured we got to get his face out there somehow, and why not do it in this scale where we rate the episode? So we do it zero to 10 Pedro faces, or we call them Pedros, and uh, and we put our averages together. And then also we go to our uh, Patreon to see what they scored it too. So let's kick things off. Uh, I don't know. Lacey, what did you score this episode from zero to 10? And Pedro's. So I gave this episode an 8.5. 
Ooh, reasoning because it had a lot of promise of what's to come and it's still not as hot as Cobb Vanth, so it got an 8.5 and not a 9. <laughs> hey, that's Can't argue with that. Uh, James, what'd you give this one? Um, I gave it an 8 and, and the reason is I, I feel like I wish there, I know. I, I wish I could um, kind of change my scores from before because what I do is I rate this episode based on what I've rated other episodes before. So 8.5 being my highest, you know, I was like, ah, it's not, like I said, it's not my absolute favorite right now, but I think it might be in the long run. So since we only do half points, I got to go just one tick below my favorite highest rated episodes, um, which has been, we've done that for two episodes so far. So I'm going to do eight on this one. All right. That's fair. Uh, Ming, how about you? What'd you think? uh, Zero to 10. I mean, oh man, eight is, eight is low. Um, I was low. (laughs) I, I was not, you know, say the biggest fan of the last episode. It was, uh, you know, the 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 old monster of the week episode. It didn't really drive the plot for the couple of plot holes, whatever. But this one, this one, even without Cobb fans, Cobb fans automatically adds another one or one or two points. That's why I went down a half point. I was yeah. like, no Cobb fan. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I didn't know we, we could do like points, you know, uh, but I, I initially gave it a nine. I'm going to give it more. I'm going to go like a 9.2. Um Pretty solid TGC rating. Uh-huh. If uh, for anyone grading comic books out there, <laughs> uh, I listen. I I think every if they if every show was some kind of assault on something like the prison assault, or uh, you know a great callback to you know like the Death Star assault escape. Yeah, you want to call it, but with more weapons and more stuff that blows up, and more stormtroopers that can't shoot anything, and whose armor does nothing. I yeah I. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I really, I really love this episode. I think it, um, n- not that last week made me doubt or anything. I know not everyone can be like a 10, but this right. one really brought things back. Oh, right on. Yeah. I, I always find it funny when stormtroopers, like they always say, blast them. And it's like, you know, what, are they, what else are they going to say? Like that's the only, their only job. They're not good they at did it. hit him though. Yeah. That's a big yeah. deal guys. Yeah, that's true. Good thing for that best car um all right i get i gave this one i'm right kind of in the middle of everybody here so me and Lacey are tied on this with an 8.5 um i really enjoyed this episode a lot and i know it was on the shorter end of the stick but i never found myself wondering how much time was left i just knew when it, when that music started hitting and they got back in the ship and i knew it was ending kind of like the end of mr rogers you know when the show's about to wrap up when he puts his thing back in the closet and he changes his shoes when mando gets in his ship and they play that goodbye mando music <laughs> i was like no come on mando! Oh, geez. so but anyway that that rounds us out to to an 8.5 so that's our average collectively here uh and now let's go to our patrons uh, over at patreon.com slash resistance broadcast if you do want to support the podcast tiers start at two bucks a month but they scored this thing and they gave it an 8.86 average so they loved it uh and i don't count anyone who tries to give anything above a 10 they try to spinal tap it and do like 11s and <laughs> and, and 25s or whatever i cut it off at 10 just to make, you know, try to get the parody here um, but there, yeah, there's the score there from the patrons. Look at all those Pedro faces. There he is, just happy, smiling, knowing he's got at least two more seasons of paychecks coming. It's a good time to be Pedro Pascal. Um, but anyway, our best comment there came from Micah Harrison. What's up, Micah? And this made me laugh. So I had to, I had to, even though it's a long answer. He said, I don't even care. 9.5. I've been waiting for Katie Sackoff, the future ex Mrs. Harrison, to be on. <laughs> to be on screen as this character forever and to see it happen in such an epic way uh was just the nerd heaven uh take plus a number had, micah <laughs> yeah plus we had a very sinister gideon actor titus welliver making a cameo sasha banks uh another creature heavy episode i'm all in this is what mando is all about fun freaking star wars and boy did it deliver so uh thanks for that micah great great comment great score and now um uh, we have uh, Joseph Ritchie with the super chat. I literally cheered when I saw Bo Katan. Yeah, I mean it's that's one of those things. Some people get those reactions, even if you're like watching the show by yourself. Like you, yeah, you just like audibly say things. It's crazy. <laughs> I, I had to watch it at 5 a.m. My son's sleeping, and I'm like, oh, 
Just say leave. Yeah, but be quiet. Gotta be quiet. Don't want to wake up. What I do is I text John and James saying, "Don't go online. Watch the episode first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on all of our platforms. Me, when I wake up at five a.m., I'm like, oh, I gotta go see what people are saying on Twitter before I watch the episode. <laughs> Some people do that though, so that's why I was like, because the crazy thing is, I was the psychopath that watches it at three, and so I watched it at three. I go online, and I usually type some type of reaction of excitement with no kind of giving anything away and people were already posting screenshots from the episode and major yeah. character reveals were trending and i was like oh my gosh <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's tricky out there a lot of people want that clout and i don't know that it's worth it <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not clout. that's just being an idiot that's not like, i agree yeah. yeah they think it is but it's not yeah um ming before we proceed to easter eggs speaking of easter eggs what's what, what, what kind of blades do you have back there i see the luke skywalker lightsaber but you got some other crazy stuff going on uh, you have sharp eyes my friend because uh you know I, you know unless you've got like some gigantic 100 inch screen but uh yes i do have a weapon wall back there uh, <laughs> i guess we'll start from the bottom uh that is the uh luke skywalker slash ray slash uh, og new hope yeah. uh lightsaber followed by the uh the darth vader lightsaber followed by the uh luke i guess 2.0 green lightsaber from return of the jedi mm -hmm. all uh bought at uh from toys r us at one point the uh, star wars black series i feel bad because uh i got them for half price so they had this price matching policy and i saw barnes and noble had them online for half price for some reason they never really had them in stock but i was like hey man you guys price match right well here you go wow <laughs> And then two months later, they went out of business. So <laughs> Man, I, you, you did it to him. Do I feel bad? I mean, listen, it was some, you got to do what you got to do to get what you got to get. Um, you know, that's, uh, it's <laughs> more, that's Love more that. bounty hunter than, you know, say Jedi, I suppose. Right. But, you know, the Jedi kind of got wiped out. So <laughs> like us, they just disappeared like a local legend or, you know, a long lost legend. Yeah. Uh, Above those, uh, there's the Michonne Katana from Walking Dead, and above that is a Hattori Hanzo sword. So, Ooh, okay. Very yeah. cool. So the, yeah. the, the moral of the story here is if you come to a shared universe and you podcast, don't steal anything because don't. something's getting cut off for sure. Right. That's yes. the punishment. Yes. Um, what would be your... It, it, say say the lightsabers were real and you had a perpetrator. Which What would, what would be your go-to? Uh, it's, got, it's got to be the blue uh, light, uh, uh, Luke lightsaber i mean that yeah. thing going through so much you know that thing's not going to fail me or, or anybody for that. <laughs> and then so you'll awesome. lose it and somehow you'll get you'll get it back so mm -hmm. yeah yeah i don't know how but okay so now now we got to get the headlines ming chen responsible for toys r us going out of business yeah oh yeah and if you don't if you don't get it back your kids will get it back or your uh arch rivals grandkids will get it for you <laughs> Yeah, it just doesn't die. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, right on. Um, all right, now let's get into uh, some Easter eggs. Up oh, before that, who we got here? Mick Elvis the ch uh, said the children of the watch thing is going to be so interesting. The protagonist having everything he thought he knew turned on its head. Yeah, that's a good point. We're going to get to that in a little bit for sure. Lando C back here. Uh, I'm hoping for chapter 12, they will focus more on Moff Gideon's arc. And then they picked it back up with Din and the child finding Ahsoka in chapter 13. Your thoughts? Um, yeah, we'll have to get to that in a little bit. Um, but it's certainly exciting. And then Star Wars thrifting. Uh, is this silver? It is. Yeah. What's up, silver? Um, shout out to director Bryce Dallas Howard for knocking it about hundred percent. Absolutely. You saw our scores, uh, very high scores there. And, uh, we're certainly going to get into why, but let's get, let's get into some Easter eggs here. So context isn't really as important here. Uh, we go around and take turns until we run out. Uh, and whether it's uh, a direct Easter egg from Star Wars or a reference to pop culture or something else from nerddom out there than John Favreau or someone trying to weaseled into this, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, we'll just have some fun with it. Uh, try not to reach too far, especially if we have a lot going around. Um, I, I only have a few myself, um, but we'll have some fun with this here. So um, Ming, do you, did you point out any easter eggs or like references that caught your eye in this uh, yeah uh, i got I, I got two ones a real quick one uh, i think they mentioned as hey you might run into some stormtroopers like oh they can't shoot straight so i mean <laughs> i love that it's universally known no matter if you're in the outer rim you're wherever you are it's it's basically a joke at this point um so that was good but i think my favorite thing was uh that that water crane that picked up the uh, the razor crest i was like though is that a is that 
like a repurposed adat cut in half. The legs, mm -hmm. I noticed the legs right away. Yeah. Same structure, same, you know, I guess they came from wherever they build adats, uh, you know, I Coruscant, I don't know wherever, but um I I I I love that that is one of my favorite vehicles. And this one worked out great because it doesn't have to move anywhere. It's a slow yeah. vehicle. So, you know, picking stuff out of the out of the water. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought that, you know, such a it's very quick, small reference, but I it was huge for me. Yeah, that um, I I noticed it, and then especially the sound had the very same sound that it made when it was walking yeah. on *Empire Strikes Back*. But and I can't believe I missed this because I have the book. Um, I actually have it back under here. It's the, from *The Art of Solo*. It's it's a concept art from *Solo: A Star Wars Story* that they didn't wind up using mm -hmm. in that movie, so they used it for *Mando*, which is a repurposed AT-AT, kind of like when you have an old uh, an old volkswagen and it turns into a school bus like it's just like, let's have a second life for this thing yeah. and this thing turns out to pick up ships that's pretty cool but that's a great that's a great pick there uh ming chen um all right uh so I, that was on my list so i'm crossing that off lacy do you have one um there was the moment where he's underwater and bo katan reaches for him it's very similar shot to season one where he has the flashback of death watch helping him out of that like storm door basement mm -hmm. oh, area cool. so like even the shot of the hand reaching out for him is very similar to when he was a child so i thought that was pretty cool yeah that is cool i like that i didn't make that connection that it's good i now have to go but so i'm sure someone's going to put it together and do the montage thing about to go back and check that out um james what do you have for uh, easter eggs or references i feel like i had to do it because i did it last week but aliens again right oh aliens sure jumping yeah. up on his face this time <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> also, that, that reminds me of Beetlejuice a little bit too. Oh yeah, that's true. With the shrimp fingers. Yeah. Still very creepy. comes out of the soup, even specifically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah very creepy. Um, okay. What did I have here? Oh, I had one that I was like, "There's no way people are gonna get it," and that never happens to me because people always know it. But so when Mando's about to land, he goes almost there. Almost there. And I was like, that has to be a reference to A New Hope when Gold Leader's about to fire his torpedoes. Because uh, he says it twice in a certain tone. Uh, so I don't know if anyone else picked up on that. But that's I think one. that's... Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, not until you just mentioned that. But yes, you're completely right. All right, cool, and cool. While, while we're in that too, that, that scene really quick, there's also apparently some um, like pod racing sounds like right, but uh, right as he lands, I think you're yeah. right. Like Anakin's uh, pot, like stalling out, almost yes. like stalling yeah. out. Down. <laughs> That's a great one. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because um, you you could probably like ask and like someone like a Matthew Wood with Skywalker sound and be like, "Did you guys do that?" And they'll be like, "Maybe." <laughs> <laughs> um, Ming, did you have any others that you caught? Um, I I think those are the, the. I mean, you guys hit all the other major ones. So yeah, um, major ones. Yeah, the, I, I had maybe one or two more. I know someone uh, had tweeted at me one that I have to give a shout out to in a second. But Lacey, did you have any others? Not really. I mean, outside of, you know, we got Akbar's running around everywhere with cable knit sweaters on, which was amazing. <laughs> that is uh, tis the season. Quarins are kind of dicks. That's what I've learned <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> always. always. It's Never. now canon. Just scumbags. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, outside the obvious things of certain characters showing up and, and characters being referenced, yeah, I think that's pretty it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we saw, we saw the, him use the Mon Calamari flan that he got as a, a reward earlier. Uh, yes. Yeah. And it still makes that noise when it hits the table. The, yes, yeah. <laughs> he says dank ferric, which, uh, as, as a, as an expression of like angst or whatever, which is, I think I think. I could be wrong if anybody knows. I think it was the first time it was used is in the first season of Mandalorian um, by the Meryl or whatever his character is. The, the blue guy. Mithril, yeah. Because Bo-Katan uses it that. too. Oh, she does? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. So Larry uh, Grudelstein, uh, cool Batman avatar, by the way, animated series. Love that. Uh, said the deal has changed. Quite. I did kind of... So that is kind of similar to... Uh, the Lando Vader, I'm altering the deal thing because um, Mando said you altered the deal. Uh, so that is made that, but could be a little bit of a wink, might be a little stretch. But I know Favreau loves Empire, so it could be. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Mick Elvis said, not just this episode, Quarren have been dicks since Clone Wars. They started with sharks. Come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they did. Yeah. They did. Um, all right. I had uh, two more. Oh, well, yeah. The one. So uh, Dale Brooks tweeted at me and he said, do you think Mando's ship, the Razor Crest, going through the atmosphere and almost burning up uh, was a reference to Apollo 13, which Ron Howard directed and Bryce Dallas mm -hmm. Howard directed this. Uh, and I said, I don't know, but if not, it's a very cool coincidence. Yeah. Uh, so I like that. I don't, I don't know no. if you saw it or not, but it popped up as a comment a little bit ago. Lacey pulled it up. Oh, did it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody okay. else I pointed that out. Yeah. Okay. Very. So maybe, yeah, more people are pointing that out than maybe. Um, and then my last one, uh, Bo-Katan had the white com link, which was almost the same exact one that 3PO used for the garbage shoot uh, to, to get uh, Han Luke and Leia one. out. That same ugly little white com link thing, which was probably like a, who knows, like a dental floss or something. <laughs> <laughs> who, knows, who the heck knows? All right, that's cool. All right, so we'll hop out of Easter eggs now. And uh, before we get into our just overall chat about the episode, I want to give out uh, our Mando code number. For our giveaway uh so ming we do this whole season long thing where we take them on this like bounty hunt journey so every episode yeah. we, we give them a number and they have to collect them all uh so it just reminds me of, like those those things as a kid uh like those old action figure things like collect all six and then submit this and then you know oh yeah mail it in and then like in eight eight to ten weeks you might get something back right? <laughs> yeah, might, with, with get something eight, eight back. proofs of purchase <laughs> Right, they're like pieces of the cardboard you cut out. Yeah, and there's no guarantee. But, By the I way, mean, yeah, really quick. Hold on, Mark Hamilton said this, and I wanted to know if this was true because I noticed this: is that the girl, the woman that speaks when he enters the atmosphere, mm -hmm. tells him to slow down. It sounds mm -hmm. like Bryce Howard. Do we know if it is? Oh, I yeah, I saw a couple people tweet at her to see it, but she didn't respond. Mm. You mean that, that like air traffic controller? Yes, yeah, slow down. Okay. It sounded like her. It very well could be. And it's then I noticed that it didn't sound like Corin or Moncala. It sounded like a yeah. like a human or a robotic voice or something. Ming, you like that move? Uh I well, I mean you don't have to pay another actor to do it, so yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, <laughs> We all know that Disney is hurting right now and uh, they, you yeah. know, they cut costs whenever they can. So, True. yeah. Um, I did see Double C gave a shout out to Red Bank, New Jersey. Yes. Uh, Thank you, so Double C. Double cool. C. Uh, and Caleb uh, Poosh. Poosh or Poosh? I'm sorry, Caleb. Poosh? Poosh. Poosh. Um, <laughs> Poosh. Bosk. Like yeah. The uh, right. Uh, two obscure things. The soup reminded me of the stuff they served to Ewan McGregor in the movie The Island. Ooh. Yeah. Definitely. Um, that's a that's a pretty decent movie, actually. I kind of like that movie. And the officer in the cargo hold is the guy Leslie Nope goes bowling with in Parks and Rec. Yes! He's also the guy in the office who eats the turtles. He's and the, the, the Steve Carell yells, yeah, and yells, where yeah. are the turtles? Like, I eat the turtles, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Get the website up. The guy's right. Get the website up and maybe we'll come back. <laughs> Um, it's a you know it's it that it reminds me of how long ago the office was because that guy looked a lot older now. Like you forget the mm -hmm. office debuted 15 years ago. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Still holds up. It does. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, Caleb responded. Caleb's back. It's a oh pouch. Okay. All right. Sorry, Caleb. My bad. Thanks, buddy. We were all wrong. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which which is, which is which is not rare around these parts for us. Um. All right. So the Mando Code is back. Uh, it is our season long giveaway contest. I will reveal a number every episode, including our season finale recap show. And on that final show, we'll reveal how to submit your guesses to win the Mando Code bounty. Uh, throughout the season, we'll reveal additional items as the bounty grows. Just like last week, we added the supersized baby Yoda Funko Pop. Uh, but the grand prize will be a limited edition Mandalorian box, thanks to our friends at JewelryBrands.shop, which includes Werner Herzog's Empire Medallion from Season 1, the Mandalorian skull necklace that baby Yoda wears, and a brick of Beskar steel. Uh, and it comes in a nice box, and it, I think there's only a few thousand made uh, mm -hmm. so you get your hands on one of those. Uh, so be sure to follow them on Twitter at jewelry underscore brands. And if you want to go to their site and you see some st of stuff of theirs that you like, if you use TRB on checkout, you get 10% off. So uh, check that out. Um, all right. So I hope you have the last two, the first two code numbers. Uh, if not, go back and listen to those episodes because people aren't going to help you out here. This is cutthroat bounty time. 
Uh, this week's number in the Mando code is 15. One, five, 15. So uh, my throw off number, thank you. It's my lucky number. <laughs> that's, your, that's your lucky number? Yes. What is, so is it based on? I thought your lucky number was 37. Yeah, uh, that's Kevin's lucky number that I've uh, that I've kind of co-opted, but uh, yeah, <laughs> my lucky number. Right on, cool. Any any uh, reason you can reveal, or is it just one of those? Um, well, uh, when I was in first grade, I went to a fair and they put a hamster in the middle of this wheel with a bunch of numbers cut out of it, and the one it ran through, like you won a prize, and I I had number fifteen. <laughs> I won a little mini. I won a little mini Rubik's cube, and uh, I was like, "All right, well, this that's my lucky number from now on." That's the one. Wow. I like yeah. that. Yeah. What do you say right. if people make you choose a number between one and fourteen? Oh man, um, I, either <laughs> one or five, I guess. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ming goes and gets one of the swords from the back, and he's like, "Listen here, we don't yeah. do one to fourteen around yeah. these parts." Yeah, add, <laughs> add another number now. Add a number. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so make sure you uh, jot that number down, get it tattooed on your forehead, whatever you have to do, and uh, we'll we'll get the next number out to you uh, next week. So. Um, here we go now. We're just going to basically have a chat about the episode. Spoilers. Obviously, if you're watching this show, you watched The, Ma the Mandalorian. No one's that mm -hmm. insane. Uh, but uh, let's start things off and warm up the engines by just pointing out maybe what our favorite shot or, or moment was from the episode. Uh, so, um, Ming, did you have any, sp any specific shot or moment from the episode that stood out to you that you liked the best? Uh, I had a couple. The, um, the, 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 the ship. I can't remember the name of the the, the ship. Ra the uh, the Ra 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 no, no, the Empire ship, the oh. Imperial ship with all the weapons on it. Yeah, That's taking off, and uh, you know they mentioned they got to take it down mm -hmm. with stealthily with stealth. So it takes off, and then you see the four little you see you see the four Mandalorians in their jetpacks, jet jetpacks chasing after it. Um, and then uh, there's a shot of I can't remember who it was just sliding down stealthily and taking out the first stormtrooper. Yeah. Like, wow. That is, that is, that's an assault right there. Um, made almost without sound or, uh, or any, anything pick being picked up. I thought that was a cool job. I think I really want a jetpack right now and I don't know how to get one. <laughs> it, it, um, I think, I think all, all the jetpack shots from, um, anytime they show them any Mandalorian flying it has been pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is. I'm sure they're painstakingly shot or CGI'd or whatever, but they, they, that they're, they're striking a chord with me for some reason. Yeah. Um, uh, and then I, I mentioned before anything, uh, those, that weird hexagon, the Imperial hallways with the weird shape, um, mm -hmm. remind me of the death star. So uh, any of those, any of those assaults, uh, also, um, I, I just, I just think is amazing. I, I love, First, I guess I just love hallway battles, you know, like whether it's <laughs> the devil or Star Wars. Uh, hallway yeah, battles yeah. are because you liked so you like the um uh chapter six from season one then the the prison breakout. Oh yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Far. yeah. I love that one too, uh, with the cool droids and, and all that that whole deal. Um, all right, I, I'm actually then I'll hop in now because mine's similar to yours. When that ship takes off, and again, I don't I don't know the name of it too. Maybe people in the comments do. It, it's a it looks like a very uh, freighter type of uh, imperial. I, I, ship. I I tried to look it up. I think the actual one was like unidentified something something type freighter or okay. whatever. Yeah, but but when it takes off, it it has like the way they shot it. And I guess you know Bryce Dallas Howard. It has that eyewitness effect to it where you feel like you're there watching that thing take off. And it, it's, I don't know how to pinpoint that because I'm not a, you know, a, a technical term with filmmaking and maybe Lacey and James know or something, but it, it has, and Zack Snyder uses it a lot. And uh, it just has that effect where you feel like you're standing there, watch that thing take off and how they're doing the zooming and stuff and the out of focus. It's shaking I really, cam. Yeah. yeah, I really, I yeah, really, something yeah. about that brought some sense of uh, real feel to it. And I really enjoyed that a lot. And it made me like for a second, I took myself out of the story, which I hate doing, but in a good way, because I said they are making like visual effects on these shows that are just on like outstanding. Uh, and I just loved that every aspect of that. So um, I'm kind of right there with, with you, Ming, in terms of favorite shot. Um, Lacey, did, what, did you have a favorite moment or shot from this episode? Uh, my favorite moment was when the Mandos show up to save the Mandalorian. Like the way the music kicks in, which I think that's my favorite song that Ludwig has done for the Mandalorian. It's so good. And they keep using it every time they show up, like to yeah. beat up the 
scumbag How's horns and hum it stuff. For me? Oh, I couldn't hum it, but it's I have my a recorder favorite. in the back. <laughs> no, it's like really like kind of it reminds me of Tron. It's very like beat club tech mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. type fight music. But um, so when they show up is my favorite part. I love the shot, like I said, where she's reaching down for him and the way she's backlit. It, it It's just such a pretty shot. Yeah. But the overwhelming shot for me was when, uh, you know, tiny baby Yoda is being eaten like the the shot going down into the monster i was like why does everything have layers of teeth and everything nowadays yeah it's like the egg had that stranger things animals have that like everything's got these like layers of teeth the spider from the last episode had that kind of thing but it was just very overwhelming and when it happened i was like are they really going to do that? That's the end of it. Disney was like, we've made our money. <laughs> yeah. I didn't notice the first time I watched it that he was able to close his little yes. thing first. Um, mm-hmm. That thing didn't care, though. That thing got jacked up when they got it out of there. So um, now he doesn't have an egg. Yeah. yeah someone I, that I had a couple of them, but I don't know if that's true. Mm-mm. Yeah. Um, all right. Good pick. James, did you have a, a favorite? Yeah. My... Um... I know I normally tend to go for scenes, um, but this one was, was a shot and it's kind of similar to Ming's. Um, but it is specifically after, uh, uh, Din Djarin, like leaves, he, he kind of turns around and he takes a look at the, the Mandalorians as they blow up that vessel and you watch them all three kind of take off with wow. the streaks in the sky. And I was yeah. like, this is such an awesome shot. Um, and I didn't say it in the Easter eggs episode, but it kind of reminds me of the resistance brew coffee logo a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what they were. They were referencing the, our, our coffee um, <laughs> that we have now. We do have a coffee now. That is true. Yeah, yeah. Weirdbrothers.com. Yeah. Look up resistance. Yeah. Brew no, but coffee. yeah, we did that. We did this thing with like the, the ships at the top and they leave the streaks or whatever, which is a very star Warsy thing. Kind of cool. um, it's like the, the kind of the, late seventies, early eighties, like retro star Wars look. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, yeah, it doesn't it, uh, have teeth within James. that shot. It, <laughs> it does not actually, I'm sure that all the characters in that scene have teeth. So yes, <laughs> all the teeth, <laughs> all of the teeth. Um, um, that was my favorite that is shot. A great, yeah. Especially with that sunset and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That, that's a good mm-hmm. shot. Um, Ming, are you a fan? Have you seen uh, the Rocketeer? That'll move the Rocketeer. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. And, and I know, I know they keep. I either they, I don't know if they confirm they're like, oh, we're gonna redo it. Which I was like, that that first one's highly underrated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that it hurts. Um, yeah, yeah, everything's from the production design to the actual movie itself. But do you know um, I've watched it like probably four times since the Disney Plus. I'm like, this holds up. I don't know what it is, <laughs> man. It is it holds good. up. I wondered a lot if of Fav- Top Gun in this episode too. I felt, yeah. Um, I I wonder. I'll get to um, Lando's comment in a second. But I, uh, Ming, I wonder if Favreau, because he did Iron Man with the jetpacks, he did yep. this. I wonder if he was a Rocketeer fan. I, I gotta I gotta think so. I gotta think that's gotta be up uh, in one of his yeah. top movies for sure. Yeah, and he even uh, a man that great, he recognizes how underrated that that awesome movie is. Yeah, absolutely, without a doubt. Dude, the music in that movie. It's iconic, man. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, it is. Um, so let me get to Lando. Lando's back. What's up, Lando? Yeah. Uh, he said, John, since you just binged the show Lost, how cool was it that the Man in Black had a cameo? And man- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, what is his name? I always forget his name. He looks uh, like a bad guy. You know how some is- guys just have bad guy looks? Yeah, he always plays oh, yeah. a bad yeah. guy. Yep. T- Titus Welliver. Um, he was in uh, one of my favorite movies. He was in The Town. He played mm-hmm. one of the FBI agents, which I guess he was a good guy in that one. But he's in Sons of Anarchy. Where Depends he, on your he, point of view. He did a, a really bad Irish accent, apparently, according to <laughs> anyone from Ireland. But not I wouldn't, you know. But uh, and he's also, I've seen, yeah, Lost and uh, a bunch of other stuff. So, um, yeah, he, he that was a cool cameo. I love seeing these Mandalorian cameos because a lot of them are so random, right, Ming? Like, you're like, oh, my God, that put, why is that person's in the Mandalorian? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, the dude from The Office is on there. Like, why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But- yeah, they're they're really pulling them out for sure. 
Yeah. All right. So what? All right. So let's get to this um, from Matt Howe, and then we'll uh, just open it up. You guys are awesome. Thanks for all you do. What are your thoughts on Bo-Katan and Ahsoka for those of us who have never delved into the extended universe? So, um, yeah, I mean, we're going to get into that right now. Um, uh, and Christian Morales said, an Imperial Gozanti class cruiser. So is that the name okay. of the ship? That yeah. is. Christian. I knew you had her back, Thank man. You, uh, man, Cold I love you. Her. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, the, the yellow makes all the two happen shirt thing. I yeah. Think. Uh, we have sweet Star Wars delight. In last week's episode, I noticed after rewatching that at the 27 minute mark, uh, Tiny, aka Baby Yoda, lets out a nervous toot. No <laughs> joke. <laughs> you is, that, is that canon? Do we, can we get, get, get that confirmed? Don't tweet it, Matt Martin. Uh, Christian Morales said, We can't ignore the fact that Din ditched Bo Katan and they still came back to help him a second time. That's that's a good point. That mm -hmm. is a really good point. They, um, they, they were still interested in having his back. Um, but she, yeah. I think she did that. Maybe we'll open it up here right now. I think she did that because she wanted to drop that line, like that very like Batman line, like, he didn't kill you, I did. Yeah, He didn't kill your brother, I did. So, uh, Ming, your, your overall take on this episode, um, what did you think about it? And uh, just let it rip, man. I mean, anytime you get multiple Mandalorians, it's gold. It's gold. And, and yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, we know this. The creators know this. The audience knows this, and um, I, I'm. I mean, I'm only going to assume we're going to see more of this um, uh, to further the mythology. To, well, who, I just want to see more Mandalorians. The, the the everyone's got different armor too, which is awesome. And mm -hmm. I want to know like everyone's origin behind you know why they're why they have the different helmet designs and the insignias and everything. And um, I I'm. I mean, I guess I'm going to have to go on the internet and look up every detail but i love I, I love watching movies where i was like oh i wonder where that came from i'll go on the internet and, and search things rather than you know you just see it once and you kind of forget about it yeah but, uh yeah I, I i mean this episode for me was was almost perfect so um and this is only episode three of the second <laughs> i know that's well, the thing seven, four, so uh they are they are knocking it out of the park i i i, I this just makes me happy just for all you know have i been disappointed in some of the you know highly touted movies or or properties I've, absolutely but this mm -hmm. this 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 is uh this makes people stay up till 3 a.m on a friday yeah and i yeah. i don't <laughs> no. know very many things out there right now especially with everything all the tv shows and streaming and and you know, TikToks, YouTube's, whatever. I don't know anything else right now that does that. So, um, great job. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing but praise for sure. Yeah, it's um because you know a lot of people thought last week's episode was one of the lower tier ones, and then I feel like uh, everyone um, really latched on to this one. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. One thing I, I did notice, um, I, I have to go back to season one and get a refresher on it. But in all three episodes of this season so far. There is a little, you know, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours type of thing. Because you have Mando with Cobb Vanth. He's like, I'll give you your armor, but you got to kill this thing. Mm -hmm. And then in the second episode, it's like, I'll take you to my husband who knows where Mandalorians are, but you got to take me and my eggs to this place. And then in yeah. this one, Bo-Katan's like, I'll let you know where that Jedi is, but you have to help us take down this Imperial ship. It's like... Can it, like can Mando just be like, look, can I give you like a thousand credits, and we just can we just not not please, can we just not do this? Like I don't know, it's yeah, a lot I'm of good pro quo. I'm tired. I'm tired of getting shot at. I'm tired of getting <laughs> like, eaten. He's tired always throwing money around. Like just give the money. Yeah, back. yeah, he's got yeah. plenty of it apparently. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and I love the waiter. Sounds to me sounds just like Walter Matthau. I don't know why. I just hate that there's like a chowder tube that hangs from the ceiling that they just spit into bowls. I, it, <laughs> it's like an oil change. It's like they like. <laughs> I hate seafood, <laughs> so that That's just like, like uh, really grossed me out. That restaurant was like the the Chick Fil A of the Star Wars universe. Like they only really make one thing, and people just line up and they just keep handing them chicken sandwiches. It, yeah, <laughs> except it's just here's your chatter, here's your chatter, here's your chatter, yeah. here's your chatter. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to say that Charles is saying he'd get up at three a.m. for Comic Book Men. 
Thank you, Charles. I appreciate that. I <laughs> want, a lot of you had to because we aired so dang late. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it? Ten o'clock? It was midnight. It started midnight. At, it started at ten o'clock, and uh, um, they did a little research. Like, well, all the stoners stay up late, so we'll just air it at midnight. <laughs> and you know, and we still got pretty good ratings. So I guess that that says a lot for the show. Um, yeah. So wait, Charter is traditionally made up of seafood and fish, and I know it's a seafood and fish planet, but like, is there maybe a little cannibalism going on here? Yeah, not- they're eating yeah. themselves. Like the corns yeah. are eating these octopus things, which, by the way, how is Sasha Banks slurping that? It had to be CG. So like, imagine the takes she had to take with no slurp, like the thing to slurp. You think she was just doing this? Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. Wait, because the way it hits her face and it like That's slides into thinking. her mouth is very CG. <laughs> Give me yeah, the Emmy. I, Give me the Emmy. Okay. Speaking of oh. hoods, I have a lot of questions about Sasha Banks. One, the slurping thing. Two, yeah. why mm. does she have a cloak? And where does the cloak go? Mm. She, she has probably, a costume change. She probably stole the cloak and then got rid of it. <laughs> It's actually I mean, snuggy they, like yours. It's just yeah. In, in, in Clone like Wars, they they wear the cloaks a lot. It's to hide all the armor. Yeah, but where does her helmet go? I don't know. There are a lot of comments about how good of an actress she was, and I agree. I thought she was very very good in this episode. From her delivery of lines, to the way she rocked her armor, and like the swagger walk she does, which I know is like from wrestling itself. I yeah. loved her. I thought she was great. I. I would say very like serviceable, like did, did what she needed to do well, not yeah. like stood out or was exceptional or, or stole the scene or anything like that. I thought yeah. she was great. I think she probably did the stunts too. Oh, Maybe. I don't doubt that. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and for people who are just watching this for the first time, if you just watch only the Mando fan show, I do this stupid thing with the blanket all the time on TRB. I'm not just <laughs> making fun of Oh, yeah. yeah. And nice. her name is Mercedes, not Sasha Banks. I'm just calling right, her I'm Sasha like, Banks. I'm like, who are you talking about? You know? right. Sorry. Let's Sorry. use her Christian name. So Mercedes right. Vernando, <laughs> I believe, Mercedes. which is a beautiful name. It's just, you know, Varna- everybody Varnado, yeah. Varnado, yeah. And, and she, I loved how she posted a picture being like, I'm crying right now, like with her, with her TV. Yeah, I love that's it. All that. She's She's Snoop Dogg's cousin. Did you know that? I believe you said that on a previous show. Yeah. It, really? I don't think he did. I don't know. I never heard oh, that. Oh, yeah. He definitely yeah. has thrown that out a couple yeah. times. Really? Yeah. Oh. So she was washing down uh, her, her, sp- her, her squid spaghetti with gin and juice. Uh, that's canon now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Star Wars Thrifting says there was a scene with a kick to the chest that had to be her. I agree. I think she did a lot of this. It was like a stuff. drop kick. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I, I thought um, a lot of the the moves in this were very Clone Wars esque, like Clone Wars Rebels so, style of fighting and stuff, which bodes well for Ahsoka in the in the long run. Yeah, James, what do you think of uh, Bo Katan? Obviously, it, it is Katie Sackoff who did the voice, so that's a big thing for fans. She can pull off the look. Uh, the age is. I had some debates with people on is she did she look younger than she probably should have been being how old she mm-hmm. was when she was around during the clone wars but i can get past that it's star wars it's silly it's ridiculous we we're supposed to believe you and mcgregor is only nine years younger than alec guinness and when the <laughs> oh, kenobi series mm-hmm. comes out so wh- what what do you think of uh katie sackoff uh as uh bo katan so i'm probably the person the most here is like ma- should be massively excited excited for this um and i i was really the only the only thing just to get it out of the way real quick the only thing is i think the hair was throwing me off and i think they had to make a decision about like do we do the iconic red hair uh even though it looks a little cosplay um or do we try to like modernize it years later and make it look like normal or whatever, but she's always had that hair. So I think they went with the, the regular look, but I was like, I don't know that her hair would, would even be red at, at the age that she is. I don't know. It's just, a, but it, her voice it, though. It, it yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think, like, I think she everything about the, yeah, the character um, and, and the armor and, and all that stuff. Yeah. That was totally her. And I was very excited because it was, it was like unreal to see a character from, the Clone Wars in live action. Um, yeah. it, it, absolutely nuts. And it's funny too, because you know how people were like, oh, so who's this Cobb Vanth guy? And you're kind of like explaining him. I felt the same way with this one. I saw I saw a comment on Reddit that was like, I can't wait to explain to everybody in my family that she's Luke Skywalker's father's master's lover's sister. 
yeah. and that's why i'm around. so excited yeah, yeah. um Adam Odell said her armor was definitely on point. Yeah, that was really cool looking. Um, uh, but what's funny is I had the subtitles on, and it says like Bo-Katan kicks something before she even talks. I'm like, oh, that's Bo-Katan. Oh yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. when I, she I, said I mean, "put tea on," I was so excited. I loved that line. I know it was like some people were a little like, "Oh, it's cheesy." I loved it. Like, put some tea on, I'll be right up. Oh, oh I, I like loved that, it. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah, I, I like that. It. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, Ming, are you uh, the like the observant type when it comes to because I'm not like watching something being like, oh, they're referencing that or oh, that's going to be this or do you just kind of like get sucked into the moment? Uh, I, I I try to be depending on how obvious it is or uh, I mean I I love it coming from the comic book slash like Kevin Smith world. Um, oh, yeah. like, oh, God, Walt Flanagan's dog or you know. That's the <laughs> <laughs> little things like that definitely definitely gets me excited and if i'm the only one in the theater laughing at a joke that makes me even happier I, yeah. Yeah. And you, if you had that one other person that laughs you're like we are now bonded oh yeah we are best <laughs> for sure like yeah because yeah. when um she starts telling him something about i know a jedi go to two planet corvus and this i'm like oh i wonder if that's gonna be ahsoka and then she's just like uh and her name's ahsoka it's Tana. ahsoka I'm, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Okay, right. the so yeah. <laughs> I thought they were gonna leave it and not say it to no. drive fans crazy. No, they yeah. just went with it. They and Fabra like, no, just yeah. like eh, dude. or typed it. He's like, yeah. I yeah. I'm actually really surprised. That was probably the biggest shock. Like, I y- you guys know we all kind of expected Bokatan to be in the episode, right? Or or to be coming up. So you see the heiress and stuff. Well, you're like, all right, I think right? they're leading that way. Yeah. Other Mandalorians are gonna be okay. All right. So she shows up and you're like, wow, this is really awesome. But I I was actually in pure shock when they were doing that scene and and she's just like, her name's Ahsoka. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Just like that's it. They just yeah. blew it right there. I'm not reading this one. I am. okay. <laughs> Lando's back again. Hey, Lando, for the yeah. super chat. Thanks for the super chat. He said, Lacey, like I was talking about on Discord, the chowder looked like McDonald's chicken nugget goo mix. Ugh. Have you ever seen those videos? I don't no. want to know. <laughs> Ming, Ming just came from Burger King, so at least they didn't say Burger King. I, I did. I mean, it's all goo, and it's all bad for you. <laughs> But Ming it's doesn't the, it's good. the same nuggets. They buy them from the no, same place. The life lesson for Ming is it's all goo. You know, you put it in boiling oil and it tastes great when it comes out. So what are you, yeah. you going to do? As long it's as it's good. breaded. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all about the dipping sauces. So. There you yeah, go. true. What's your go-to dipping sauce? Uh, our, for, for goo nuggets, uh, definitely the McDonald's hot mustard. is Really? Hot I hot like hot sweet and sour. Yeah, I I recently came back to honey, but uh, but my favorite like in a packet sauce, Chick Fil A sauce, baby. Oh, so so do you, good. Do you like stockpile those? Do you have a bunch of those? Oh in yeah, the bag? yeah, yeah. I like their yeah. Hawaiian. Oh no, Polynesian sauce. <laughs> the Polynesian. <laughs> I'm picturing James at home, like when he has free time, and he's just like taking the packets and putting them into one vat. And he's just saving no, his little No, but sometimes batter. I'll stick it on other stuff. Like the other day, I found out Chick-fil-A sauce is great on hot dogs. I was like, ooh. Yeah. All done, my friend. Um, all right, what else What else in this episode can we get into here? There's going to be, a, I mean, there's plenty of stuff. I mean, the special effects, I thought were, like we said, I, I thought they were unbelievable. Um, I thought, and a lot of that is based on the director to make some final calls on stuff. So I thought Bryce Dallas Howard really spread flex the muscles here because a lot yeah. of people didn't like her episode and i don't know that that was her fault last year the one with the village i wasn't um, a fan of that episode that was that was my least favorite episode but and, and i you know we don't know if that no, was wait, her direction the Tatooine or, one was my least favorite that was my second that was least the favorite. one yeah. yeah uh but she really did a great job here i think uh and i thought everything looked seamless it looked great baby yoda was shot well he didn't look too hokey in this one the frogs um, got together and they had that's, a baby. That is, so that, <laughs> yes. that's something that needs to be addressed because it's almost like when reading a book that has a lot of chapters, you shouldn't put down the book after chapter nine and start screaming about it and maybe wait till you finish the journey. And it, you this, see baby Yoda kind of do some character growth and play uh, with the baby. It was yeah, cute. Yeah. So I think there was a little bit of closure on that one. 
Um, the, the official name for that character is frog man, which I just think is a travesty. <laughs> I, I'll throw out a few other, I mean, it, it's frog lady, right? So frog lady. It, I mean, bare minimum frog gentleman, please. Uh, gentleman. I will also accept frog Lord, uh, for Lord and lady, right? There you go. Frog Lord. Okay. Yes. All right. I guess, you know, last year, their species uh, or their bloodline. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, at yeah. that point, you, you can give yourself royal titles at that point. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Sir Frog. <laughs> um, uh, Christian said the frog couple coming together has to be one of the sweetest moments of all time. Star Wars. It really oh, was. He, see, if he's talking about the hug, like the yes. Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan like, hug. Yes. She's like running like this. Yeah. Yes, and the music uh, builds. They put their there. heads together. Oh, it was that very was cute. Very sweet. And yeah, I, 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 for some reason, I was thinking about the puppeteer department because they had the eyes blinking and like full of like almost like look like tears. Uh, and those look like tangible puppet suits. Or you the know, frog like, lady is played by the same uh, woman who did Queel. Yeah, Misty Rosas. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, who do we got here? Sweet Star Wars delight. One of the best shots of the episode was when we got to see bunches of baby Yoda's face through yeah. the eyes of the squid in the razor crest at the end. That was that was pretty cool. I don't know if anybody oh. else has noticed this. It seems like animals attack baby Yoda. Like yeah. they all have this thing where they're drawn to him to attack him. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if they're gonna get into that, but like that thing went for him. You know, the spiders all attacked him. The thing in the soup attacked him. I don't know if they're like they're drawn to him for some reason or what that is. Well, he's always getting in trouble. <laughs> oh yeah, he's like a little Dennis the Menace. Dennis yeah, the menace. can't take John. your eye off. <laughs> you can't take your um, eye off. I'm surprised we haven't got into Moff Gideon's first appearance. I, I yeah, so I want to get to that. I, I think to to put a bow on the whole um the controversy thing with the baby yoda stuff like seeing him see the tadpole born and him being like oh that's that that's what that is and then him like playing with it uh i think really squashed a lot of the uncomfortableness um uh, from, uh, from from the perspective of baby yoda like he learned something mm -hmm. out of this right ming like he actually had a character growth he, he did but i don't blame him kid was hungry he barely gets fed and when he does get fed it's it, it's in like weird dive bars cantina <laughs> it's yeah. dive bar or food chowder or, or, tube <laughs> yeah chowder. Food, yeah. All, yeah it's all you know i, I list you know the kid was just hungry and uh yeah. you know, and you know, kids kids will put anything in their mouth, so like, I don't blame. Baby. I mean, you've seen you've seen the crow, right? I have seen the crow. Yes. So, so when like the uh, Ernie Hudson has to buy Sarah the hot dog, yes, like, that, that sort of thing, like because they won't feed her, so she has to like. I see what you're saying. Like, he's yeah, 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 perhaps, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So all right, Moff Gideon, he he appears via uh, a telephone call, sort of <laughs> the the thing. I I so I've been kind of uh, I'm a big Moff Gideon fan i like giancarlo esposito from breaking bad and all that stuff um we're giddy for gideon on this podcast for sure uh, i've been disappointed he hasn't shown up yet because i want to build up that villain um i was so right episode three you did say that that's true i i think i i kept trying to just hope he was in every episode that was coming mm -hmm. up next mm -hmm. um but uh ming what do you do you dig uh this character so far do you still uh reserves because we haven't seen enough where, where are you at with this guy? i mean i i i don't know uh, i'm waiting or you know what this might be i i was about to say it was like yeah you know don't know much about the background but you don't need it, it was the same thing when we saw new hope like this guy in the black suit the breathing funny where did he come from i you know i don't care maybe i'll learn in 20 years and then i'll be highly disappointed but yeah. um or not highly but maybe um <laughs> yeah I, I i mean they couldn't have picked a better actor uh, of course gus Fring, yeah. breaking bad and uh john carlos but he was acting chops uh our bar and we always, we know he plays a, a great bad guy um and uh the legend of the dark saber there's there's so much to like about this character and we don't need to know too much yet we know there's probably gonna be some huge final battle possibly in episode 10 maybe next season i don't whenever it happens uh, i can i can wait for it i, I like seeing these little bits and pieces uh, i loved his reveal last year in the season finale uh where it's like oh my what is that is it holy crap that's a dark saber yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah, yeah he's just that guy he, he's like well all right you guys know what well it's too late now you guys know what you have to do and you know there's no way out of that yeah <laughs> yeah they know they were not messing around with with how much they want this character to be an evil person and him yep. being like, 
uh, you know what you have to do? And he's like, he's giving him the look and he says, long live the empire. And you're just like, oh, like you get such a dread when he says it because you, yeah. you don't know what that means, but you know, it's about to mean something really bad. And he's like, um, we need backup. He's like, you're on your own, bud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, it, and there's like, there's so many different layers of, of bad things that are happening here. Like you have the guy who's like, he's killing his own men, you know what I mean? And he's driving the ship down for the, for the glory of the empire and stuff. But yeah. there's like, it's, it's, it's weirdly like in a, in a strange way, like almost honorable. Cause you know that he like really believes in the empire and he's willing to die for it and he's willing to kill for it and all this other stuff. In but a like Moff Gideon, the Jedi world too, which is yeah. Crazy. Moff Gideon is like evil because he's the one who believes in that like when yeah. i say long live the empire it, it means you have to kill yourself and i'm not no, i'm not the killing chat myself is filled with long live the empire you know. everyone's yeah. just yeah. writing that in the chat it's right a now. great line with it's doubt. just it's 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 dark for like a disney show you know what i mean yeah you oh. think favreau favreau's in his kitchen putting together some chimichangas and he's like long live the empire he runs to his typewriter He's yes, like, I love that he went from writing to typing on a computer to a typewriter. A typewriter, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's got a he's like, like, different thing in a different room in his house. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, I yeah, I, I like Moff Gideon. Uh, Lacey, what was your take on his uh, his debut this season? He's evil, and I love it. I want him to be a really big bad guy. Like, I want mm-hmm. him to kill someone in front of me. I think he will on the show. I think he yeah. will. I, I think he's going to fight. I think it's going to be him and Ahsoka. I think that because I feel like even though like Solo didn't have it and, and Rogue One didn't have it, I, I feel like Mando is going to need because it's so much content is going to need some sort of lightsaber duel. So and you have Ahsoka is going to be he's showing up with her. What well, if they brought back Bo-Katan just to have him kill her? Oh, that, I mean, that could that could easily, and then you have the revenge uh, sort of deal. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's uh, that's interesting. That would be heartbreaking for sure. But it, you know what it does though for him, it does the Kylo Ren to Han Solo thing, where it elevates him to this guy's a hated guy now. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know. That that'll be John, John Favreau is like, hey Dave Filoni, what do you think? Uh, Moff Gideon killing Ahsoka, and he's like. Uh... Have him kill Bo Katan. <laughs> oh, That's Adam. what everybody in the chat is saying right now. They all think that he's going to kill Bo Katan. Wow. Adam, Adam, Adam Odell throwing a book it on it. Yep. That, and Christian thinks it too. Words. They're all saying it in the chat right now that oh, he's going to kill it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Man, you guys are all too well versed, man. You guys read too many books, too much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, yeah, too many. Uh, too, you're, you're too well, well versed in mythology. <laughs> i just think it would make him really bad if he killed her because everyone's oh, so yeah. excited that she's back yeah and i feel like it would be a very big fan heartbreaking moment to have that character killed the uh the magic eight ball would say yes all signs point to yes. she also made the statement i'm the last of my line <laughs> like she yeah. sets it up that it's like the stakes are high for her she yeah she's also she's out to get that sword too so her arc could be getting it back, but I feel like getting it back would probably mean killing uh, him, p- killing Moff Gideon. And we know that they're probably not going to let her be the one to do it. So it makes more sense that she's out to get that saber and she's going to be unsuccessful. Um, and that's going to make elevate him as a villain who, ha- who wields that weapon and stuff. Right. So, man. Oh, well, I think, Figured it um, out. Two two things uh, I think we should touch on before we just briefly speculate on next week. One, um, I thought the music, um, like you touched on before, Lacey, I thought the music in this episode was elite. I thought it was fantastic. They're not releasing it every week, like last year. Mm, yeah, yeah, like even the music that they that he plays. I gotta go check the soundtrack or whatever on Spotify. But when they're sleeping in the cockpit, at the no, they're not releasing the season on Spotify this year. Oh, at all. Nope. No. Yeah. No. They're not. They, it's really it was like the day. Yeah, the day it launched, they would release like the five tracks from that episode or whatever. But they're not mm-hmm. doing it this year. All right. Well, oh man, I gotta go buy it now. Like I know. Buy music. I, I think. 
I think they they underestimated how big Mandalorian was going to be the first time, and they had something in play to like release that slowly or right. whatever. And I think this time they're they're like, oh, it's the music from season two. We're selling it. It's a thing. It's going to be a package hire, deal or something. I'm gonna hire some Quarren to steal it for me. <sighs> Probably. This guy sucks. Um, the the other thing <laughs> is the whole um, which is the way thing, um, which I found interesting when he sort of gets on board with what Bogotan was saying at the end. And he says, this is the way in a very different way. He's like, this is the way like, he's like, mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So what I was told, all the stuff I was doing before, he's like, wow, you, this is I earth shattering for me. Like the blue <laughs> pill, was, red pill. Thing. Yeah. This was not the way. Wait a minute. <laughs> right, right. He goes back to those guys. What was all that way talk? <laughs> mm-hmm. Favreau. I, yeah, and and there's a line in there where Katie uh, Katie Sackoff, <laughs> but Bo- Bokatan is is like uh, teasing him for it, you know, like she's. It's almost like she's free minded and he's stuck in this like religious. She says like religious zealot group or whatever cult group, and that's it. It's not the way, but like you can't remove your helmet. Like you follow these rules. This is the way, you know, she's kind of like toying with him and teasing that. And Mm -hmm. ultimately I think, I think that all of this is going to get him to a point where we see Pedro Pascal. Like he, he realizes that the way is more than um, the rules. And you know what I mean? He, he, has started here and he was this thing. And then he slowly moved into this other direction and he's realizing it's for the better. And even he's turned his clan around. They're like, we're going to have to relocate everybody. And this is the way, you know, we got to do what we got to do and stuff. So I think they're starting to lead us down that path where this character is going to break away from what he was raised in his traditions in order yeah. to be the best person he thinks he could be to yeah. quote the army yeah ryan said that was his favorite scene of the episode that this is the way scene and i agree it's very compelling because now i don't know if you're gonna have warring clans or anything like that but it has a, def- a new element uh, mm-hmm. without a doubt uh this is nick said bo katan's mandos will be an influence on din to finally remove his helmet come season three yeah yeah, yeah I, I agree with that um all right so uh, looking ahead to next week, if you want to do it, just uh, take a minute to do a brief little guessing and speculation, have some fun on that before we get out of here. Um, now, I have my eye on the schedule here. Uh, chapter 13 is the one that is directed and written by Dave Filoni. That's in two episodes. The next episode is directed by Carl Weathers. Uh, so do we think there's going to be some sort of um, delay in him getting to Ahsoka and they're saving Ahsoka for Filoni? <laughs> Meng, do you think that's... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, by far. I think this... Uh, I don't want to call it a filler episode, but... That's such uh, a taboo uh, word now, right? You can't yeah, say filler anymore. Does, uh, do, you know, uh, does Jin Jaren run into a, uh, some kind of hazard on his way to uh, meet Ahsoka? I'm going to say yes. Um what that he's got to fix his ship. It's all like cargo oh, nets. I love, yeah. I love that these little pieces keep flying off of it. I was like, you know what? I've been there. I've driven beaters. It's uh, <laughs> I've been there. But yeah, he, he needs some serious repair on that ship. I don't. I that. I, yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, I. Um. I'm. 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 A, I'm. I'm just gonna assume he's gonna run into some kind of hazard before they, they, they've got to. There's got to be a little more buildup, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you on that um i'm curious if it's going to be another one of those uh you know teeth monsters like Lacey's talking about uh which by the way i think that sea monster had like fingernails and like it was very gross uh, it looks like a kraken but no tentacles yeah. yeah yeah and by the way i'm gonna this is gonna be a hot take the quarren and all that sea stuff and mando was better than the last like four pirates of the caribbean movies <laughs> <laughs> that's not true i said hot take of- I'm- out of five (laughs) that's that's my journey Uh, i stop after the first one i like the first one um uh james and Lacey, what do you guys think we're uh, getting a little delay as well do you think they're saving it for for filoni Lacey, what do you think uh yeah i agree with ming i think the next one is going to be the episode we see uh grief karga and cara dune again i think that's the one where he goes to get help from them 
I think he needs to get his ship fixed from all the cargo nets, which honestly made me laugh out loud where he's like, I'm on Calmari. And he's got like all these like different mm-hmm. ropes that are just holding everything together. Um, and I think that's the one that Carl Weathers directed. And I think that then the one after that, the Dave Filoni one will be the Ahsoka episode. I don't think you could have an Ahsoka episode and not have it done by Dave Filoni. Yeah. That'd be really strange. Yeah, that's imagine Favreau just like they didn't get along, and he's just like, "You just missed it, Dave, by one episode." Oh no, they man. love each other. No, we I learned that in gallery. Around. They were like heart yeah. eyes to each other the whole time. Yeah. No, you're great. No, you're they're, great. They're a good pair. Yeah, uh, James, are you on board with that as well? This sort of yeah, a hundred percent. And I, I think I think the thing about it is, is like this season oddly really lines up with the first season. You know, like. A big first episode, uh, a setup second episode, a surprising third episode where, you know, you're seeing Mandalorians flying through the sky and stuff. And you're like, oh, my gosh, I never expected to see this. You know, so that fourth episode, well, what happened in the last fourth episode? Oh, G- Cara Dune. And uh, you know what I mean? So yeah. I I think that kind of lines up with what we've gotten so far. Um uh, there was something else I was going to say too, and I can't think of what it was. Oh, I was I was actually looking for, and maybe I missed it, but like I was kind of expecting to see. Um, there's an episode in season one where Grief Karga offers him an, another bounty, and it's a Mon Calamari, and he's like, "This guy was running away from royalty." And then now in season two, he goes to the planet, and that character like never showed up. I thought maybe it would have been cool if he was like in the bar or something. Um, oh yeah yeah that's but i but i but i don't know but yeah i'm I'm with you guys on speculation for that yeah the other thing was in the trailers that we got from mandalorian he's holding baby yoda when he goes to talk to grief and kara dune which would explain you know baby yoda doesn't have his egg anymore his like little carrier that's a good call great call. i actually think i noticed a um a mistake in the show Ooh, i could be wrong but but, you get out (laughs) a a goof goof. yeah you will yeah it, it's it's they're outside in the harbor they just got there and he says where do i go and they're like oh it's just the, at the inn or whatever and they walk up the door opens and and the um dinjarin walks in and then they cut over to the table and baby yoda is already sitting at the already table. there yeah i saw that he's sitting and i was there. like i think that was just like a hiccup and they didn't really know how to like fix it so they just kind of left it in and tried to bury it between cuts but I was they like, can't have the baby moving or whatever. They're like, let's just put him here. <laughs> how could how could he have gotten there before the table? Yeah, Deliberate I did notice maybe? that too. Now that you say that, it was very weird because he's like, you could have this table, and he was already there. And he's like, I was like, wait, <laughs> did he call <laughs> ahead? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, did did baby Yoda go? I got this, and he like zoomed past him to get into the restaurant. <laughs> Like the uh, the ghost of Obi Wan in that uh, Millennium Falcon cockpit shot in A New Hope, where he's supposed to be back in that other room, buckled in, but then you see him walking <laughs> behind the the cockpit. So I mean, I mean, who knows? Maybe Favreau Favreau would probably say it's an intentional goof or something. You know, yeah, maybe like yo, you guys got me. You got the Favreau can ble- can be cut. He can bleed. You got the Favreau. Um, I so I think. You know, we saw them. So I agree with you, Lacey, that he's going to show up with his dinged up ship. He's going to have Baby Yoda holding him and he's going to see Grief and Kara. And then there's that shot in the trailer where they're in that chase thing. Right. And that guy Mithril's with them. The Horatio Sands character. Right. The question is, where is he going to dump Baby Yoda off? Because he's been dropping him off with people. Oh, yeah. He finds a daycare and like every, every, every. <laughs> and everyone's always like, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> so, what if, I hope it's not the case where he, he, it turns out like the Mithril guy is the one who knows how to get to that city and that's how he gets to uh, where Soka yeah, maybe, is, maybe. Maybe tomorrow's episode, the prison break thing. There's another episode tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow, yeah. The next episode. Next I wish. I know, yeah. me too. That's what we were saying I the other itch. day, Ming. Yeah. <laughs> nice, James. Uh, <laughs> Ming, we were saying when this is over, it's going to be that just like sad, depressing Sunday night feeling when that last episode airs because then it's just like, when's new Star Wars coming? You know? Yeah. Um, so we have to enjoy it while we're in the ride here. But uh, any last thoughts uh, before we close out of here? I uh, I'm I mean just just solid all around episode. Um, not I mean every, every the, the whole show's been really 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 amazing. I I hope it continues. And um 
and that means you guys will continue, which means I can watch you after I watch that show. Oh, thanks, man. Yay! Uh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm going to try to stay up till 3 a.m. next next Friday. I haven't done it yet. Uh, well, Lacey does watch. it all the time. You and me both, yeah. Ming. Let's do yeah. this. Yeah, for sure. That'd be, that'd party. Be, <laughs> plus to watch that'd party. be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have much else to add. So, uh, James and Lacey, do you have anything you want to add to put a cherry on the Sunday on this one? Corins suck. They really do. They're really mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the more you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, she pronounces her name Bo Catan. So I was like, oh, Bo Settlers of Catan. Interesting. I never mm -hmm. pronounced it that way. Yeah. Um, but she was awesome. Glad it yeah. was Katie Sackhoff. I can listen great. to her talk all day. Seriously. Just great voice. The only thing I can think of, and not to put a sour note on it, is um ashley eckstein's got to be a little chapped at this point because she all all all, all the reports that i heard that she didn't even get like a courtesy audition or anything and then you see katie sackoff who gets to play the role uh and she's gonna have to see her character get played by you know rosario dawson that that's gonna sting a little bit she's a pro and she'll still be back doing the animated for them but you gotta think that stings a little bit in the in the pride because she played that character for 12 years but she might know. feel better if she listens to Katie Sackhoff talk. She might. Mm -hmm. She has such a good voice. <laughs> she does. She yeah. She absolutely does. Um, all right. So that's about that. Um, Ming. Um, before we get out of here, do you like plug plug uh, what you got going on? You have so much going on. So uh, just fire away on what's the latest in your um, world and all that. Thank you for the warm welcome back. I, I I love you guys. I wish I had I had nerd friends like you guys here. <laughs> friends here all, all they do is make fun of me after the quarantine we're coming down to red bank oh yeah we got we got to do it you're welcome to do an episode here as is anybody Perfect. watching <laughs> listening to this uh i run a whole podcast live streaming studio here called a shared universe which is at a shared universe.com or at a shared universe all across social media um yeah i i always have fun with you guys uh anybody can do this but if you need a little bit of help uh, i'm here to help you guys out so everybody everybody should be doing this everybody awesome. should be geeking out live streaming and telling everybody else about it i, I agree it's something about it and it, it gets you off of the social media and gets you like even if you're not doing a video version you're face to face and you're yeah. having real discussions and having yeah. fun yeah, yeah. wow absolutely. people and we're being safe you guys are miles upon miles away and we're uh yeah we're yeah. good yeah this is actually right. a still image i'm right behind you <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna take that that saber yeah. back there no. watch out um all right so we want to uh just make sure everyone uh subscribes to our show uh you can do that on youtube or any of your favorite audio podcast apps my personal favorite is spotify even though i guess they're not having the mandalorian music on it which is kind of a bummer yeah um, give us a like on youtube if you're there yeah like the video for sure starwarsnewsnet.com for all of your star wars news we do written reviews for these episodes as well i do want to uh, say thank you again to our patreon supporters because we do the regular uh, resistance broadcast mondays and thursdays but this show there's no chance it would exist without your support the time and effort we have to put into making this happen so we want to thank all of you so patreon.com slash resistance broadcast uh start tier start at two bucks a month we appreciate everyone who has been supporting us and a, a special shout out to our generals uh that's carmelo andrew staley jeremy myers neil shaw david probus john Reese, uh micah harrison jetta rosewater michael gaines bethany russ harbison and kendall gellner thank you all so much i know a lot of you are in the chat right now so we love you guys we appreciate you guys so much um next friday uh november 20th man november 20th already um, week out from thanksgiving yeah, yeah uh we will be joined by writer and producer katrina dennis uh you probably know katrina from looking for leia uh, on sci-fi uh, we're very excited for katrina to join the crew uh ming thank you again man so much for for coming on we appreciate it it's it's such <laughs> a good time last time after we had that a lot of people hit us up and were like you guys went into the like type of tangents uh away from star wars but connected it to star wars in yep. such a fun way and i felt like you brought that again today so uh you have a key to our resistance base man anytime you want to come back hit us up we we love you buddy Thank you very much. Uh, always, an, always an honor, my friends. Always an honor. <laughs> All right. And uh, for James, Lacey, and myself, I'm John. Uh, thanks for watching, listening, and being a part of what we got going over here. And uh, we'll obviously see you on the Resistance broadcast Monday, Thursday, and, of course, right here live on the Mando Fan Show next Friday at 830 East. We'll see you around, kids. <laughs>